Hello, welcome to Pastel Fruit. What you need to do is gather your materials, your colored pastel paper, I'm using gray, your box of pastels, blending stumps, erasers, um, some Kleenex or a chamois, and some Q-tips. And I've got a kneadable eraser, a regular eraser. I've got a white and black charcoal pencil. Um, so I'm ready to go. This is a brand new box that I bought from Blick. Uh, you guys will have the same exact box. These are really nice pastels for the money. They work really, really good. You will need to use um, workable fixative throughout this process. So have that ready too. So I'm looking at these long soft pastel sticks and I'm breaking them in half so that I can put pressure on either the left side of the stick or on the right side of the stick, which I'll do right here. So I'm leaning into the right side and that creates a sharp edge on the right side, but not very sharp on the other side. So it's really good for blending. Now I'm using my fingers to blend. You can use the blending stick. I don't think it works as good as just your own fingers, but you might like it. So try the blending stick. Um, I've seen people use tissue to blend any kind of paper that you put down on charcoal or soft pastel. They're very similar. The tissue will start picking the pigment right off the paper. If you use your hand, it does leave the pigment on the paper, but it lets you manipulate the pigment. Now look, I'm just using my eraser to quickly cut right through the soft pastel. That's why it's so easy to use. You make a mistake, it's no problem, just erase it. If you do like what you have, then spray it to seal it into the paper. I'm just gonna play a little bit um, I haven't used this box of soft pastel yet, so I'm checking it out. I really like it. The white's pretty um, dense. I'm putting the white over um, my erased spots, and I'm taking a dark gray charcoal pencil, and I'm seeing how that mixes in with the soft pastels. By the way, you can spend a lot of money on soft pastels, but you don't need to. Five or ten dollars will get you a really, really nice box. Um, and that's all you need. So I'm just experimenting. I'm going to put some lines and shadows under my little doodles. Um, I chose a gray paper for today's um, drawing because I wanted to see how the colors looked against the gray. It's gray is very medium. It's not too dark. It's not too light. You guys use whatever color paper that you choose to. If you did not get the colored pastel paper, you certainly can do this on the drawing paper. Don't think it'll work on a watercolor paper though. A photograph I made of an apple and a lime against a bird, and that's the one I'm going to work on for this project. I just sided my pencil against the backboard to try to duplicate the angle between the black and white. I'm now roughly putting in the apple, the form of the apple. I am changing my the way I hold my pencil a lot when I do this part because I want to hold the pencil loose so I don't get the marks too dark. I'm making circles for the apple and the lime and the leaf. I'm using white charcoal pencil on the colored paper. I think it works really good for me. Um, 
I don't want to start with pastel right away while I'm doing the layout. So, okay, I think that's going to work. That's pretty close. It's a little bigger than life size. You guys want to go for life size for sure. Now I'm taking a dark gray charcoal pencil and I'm kind of redefining where my contour lines will go. And I think I've got my eye on the slant between the black and the white and I think I need to adjust that. There's the shadow from the line and the shadow from the apple. Okay, let's look at that. Yeah, bring it down a little bit more. Okay, now I'm really ready to go. I've got my colors laid out on the left hand side and I'm going to start with the highlights. So I'm going to use some yellow and highlight the lime a bit going to rub it into the paper. Notice that I'm using rounded movements. There are no straight lines. When you're working on a rounded object, rounded form, you have to make your marks go around too. It makes it more believable looking. It makes it look better. Now, I'm putting this pigment down. It's easy to put right over the gray. I know that I'm going to have to put several layers. And what that means is, in a minute, I'm going to take the drawing outside and spray fix it lightly and let it dry for a couple of minutes outside. You don't want the smell of it coming into the house. And once I've sprayed it, give it a minute and I can start putting a second layer on the top. So what happens when you're using pastel? That's my bird, Chippy. He lives in my studio. He's a cockatiel. Um, <clears throat> when you make these layers consecutively, it really builds up rich color. And it lets you play with the imagery a bit. And um, if at any time you don't like what's happening, just take um, your chamois or your Kleenex and like I did, I'm wiping my fingers and kind of wipe the pigment off your paper. Now, if you do like it, then just keep going with it and then spray it periodically. Now, you don't want to spray it too much. And here I'm starting to put down some darker greens for the shadow of the lime. I don't have a pastel stick that is exactly the right color for the lime, so I'm going to have to mix white with yellow and kind of a lime green, a chartreuse green. Now the lime also has a lot of stippled texture on it, like all citrus fruit does. So I don't want to blend in the colors too much. I want to try to maintain that texture. and so whatever pictures of fruit that you guys are doing check out the texture and try to figure out how you're gonna show it in your drawing okay i'm gonna go in with a little bit of black there i put too much down but that's okay i'm actually i've already drawn this and now i'm just announcing on the microphone what my steps are. So notice that I'm still using that curved motion for blending. Now if you were doing a flat plane like the side of a box, you wouldn't be using all these curvy moves. You would be using very straight geometric moves. I'm going to speed up the recording now while I finish off the drawing. As you can see, I'm putting layer after layer on the line, probably about three, maybe four layers total. And then I'm going to start work on the apple. So what'll happen is I'll spray the lime about now and then I'm going to start the apple 
with the light colors, the yellows, maybe a little bit of white, and I'm going to have to mix some reds and yellows to match the tone of the apple. Notice the striations of the apple. Go vertically from the North Pole down to the South Pole axis of the apple. And they're uneven, they're not symmetrical at all, which gives the apple a lot of character. And it's up to the artist to decipher and analyze what colors, what stripes go where. So I'm using like a deep orange right now to get some of those striations in. Now the deeper red over the top. Curvy lines all the way around. You gotta make the form of the apple look very round. I'm using a little bit of the blending stick Personally, I find it easier to use my fingers. You're gonna have to try both and see what works for you. Okay, now it's been sprayed and I'm going to go over it with another layer of yellow and some brighter orange here and there. I'm saving the stem for last. I'm probably going to get the dark brown and maybe a little black pretty soon to get that shadow on the lower right side of the apple. Yeah, there I go. There it goes. I'd even put like a little bit of black in it, I think. Yeah, like that. Or purple even might look really good if it's not too much. I'm trying to keep the texture of what I've done there. I don't want to buff out the texture too much because that's an appealing thing that you want in any drawing. Okay, so now I'm kind of tightening it up using a little bit of chrome yellow. I'm probably going to think about spraying it pretty soon. Now notice I haven't done the background. It's a black, the background is solid black and an almost solid white for the table. There's no gradient I have to work on. There's really no texture with the exception of the cast shadows. So I'm doing all the hard work now, doing the light logic and the color on the lime and the apple first. I'm gonna put the leaf color in. So I'm putting the leaf greens in first and using a creamy soft pastel to highlight the edges of the leaf some lime green accents and a darker forest green to give it a little bit more depth. So now I'm starting the background black area and smoothing it out with my finger. This is going to take a couple of coats. I will have to spray this and then recoat it with black and smooth it again to get it more rich and intense and opaque. And so now, working on the white, I'm using the white soft pastel. Notice that I am not um, coloring the cast shadows yet. I'll do that separately from the white. I'm rubbing the white in and it's really apparent now how transparent the white soft pastel is over the gray. So I definitely need another coat there. But I will be putting in shadows right now. I'll use gray, I'll use purple, I'll use blue, I'll use a mixture of all of those to try to um, the richness of the cast shadow. Many artists, when they do shadows, they will put hints of blue and purple in them. It looks really good, it makes it look more natural, and it accelerates the dynamic of the warm colors against the, and the lights against the darks. So yeah, I've sprayed it. I am putting in a bit of a second coat right now, doing some touch-ups, wet my process layers, and then I'll set it up on the easel and step back and take a good look at it. Does it. How does it read? Are the colors accurate? Are my 
shadow's accurate? Is there anything I need to fix on it? And then at that point, I will do some last minute touch-ups here and there. So I'm really close. I'm going to spray it now. And then I looks like I'm touching up the black a bit. And here is the finished drawing. Sometimes people call this a pastel drawing. I've heard other people call it pastel painting. There are elements of drawing and painting in this. Now at this point you would spray one final coat over the top and you're done. And they look really good. Thanks for listening and I can't wait to see yours.